Today we're going to look at getting started with Telerik's RAD barcode. Part of Telerik's RAD controls for Silverlight WPF control suite for .NET XAML development. In this video we're going to see what it takes to get started with the RAD barcode, but first let's talk about the series. So this is the first video in a three-part series of how to use the RAD barcode. In part one of the series we will look at getting started with the RAD barcode. We will dive into Visual Studio 2010 with a blank project and create a barcode. We will discuss the references needed for the projects and any special properties to pay attention to. In part two of this series, we will look at several additional RAD barcode features and formats, including more information about the barcode types and what industries they may be used in. In part three of the series, we will look at a real-world example using the RAD barcode that involves our RAD book controls, as well as how to print a barcode. Let's go ahead and get started with Visual Studio 2010. So here we are, we're back inside of Visual Studio 2010, and I'm just going to select File, New, Project. I'm going to select Silverlight, RAD Control Silverlight Application, and I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to go ahead and give it the name Rad Barcode P1. And the source to this project and to the other two series will be included in the blog post that I'll create as well. After that's in place, go ahead and hit OK. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to host the Silverlight application in a new website and we're going to just use Silverlight 4. Press OK again. And the next thing we're going to see here is which components do we want to add. Well, I know from already playing with this that the RAD barcode needs Telerik.Windows.Controls.Data Visualization. So if I put a check on that, we'll see that it automatically adds the check to Telerik.Windows.Controls. So I'll hit Finish. Once I hit finish, you can see our project has finished spinning up. And over here under references, you'll see that we have our two controls that's needed. The Telerik.Windows.Controls and Telerik.Windows.Controls.Data Visualization. One other thing that you may notice is that the XML namespace for Telerik has already been added for us. So in just a second, when we start using the RAD barcode, that namespace we will not have to add. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my toolbox. And once I go to my toolbox, I'm just going to go ahead and pin that into Visual Studio. So as I scroll down through this, um, the first thing that I will notice is that I do not see any Telerik toolbox items. Now this sometimes happens, and an easy way to fix this is to go ahead and right click and to go choose items, make sure we're on Silverlight components, and if you scroll down you'll start to see Telerik.Windows.Controls. Well the only thing we're really interested in here is the RAD barcode. So I'm going to create a filter and this filter is going to be RAD bar code. And once I type in RAD barcode you can see all the different barcode types that's available for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check all of these. And once I have checked all of these, I'm just going to go ahead and hit select OK. So once I hit OK, uh, down here at the bottom, under general, you should see all of the different barcode types. So for this getting started video, uh, I'm going to use the most commonly used barcode, which is code 128. So code 128 is a high density barcode symbology that is used for alphanumeric or numeric only barcodes. It's commonly used for labels in inventory and industrial applications. So to use that, I would simply drag and drop barcode 128 onto my designer. So now that we've actually dragged a RAD barcode 128 to our designer, we're going to actually do just a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove pretty much everything except for the RAD barcode 
in the name. So at this point, I have a Telerik RAD barcode 128 and then a name. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add some text. So if I add text and add 128, you'll see on the screen here that actually as I was typing this, uh, it generated this barcode. So if I replace this with maybe something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you will see that it added that text onto our designer. But the thing that you may not be aware of is these last two digits here which actually is the checksum. So these two digits can actually be turned on or off with simply toggling a property. So you could go back here and you could type in show checksum and you could place that to false. And of course, it would be removed from the barcode. In this case, we want to go ahead and we want to add that back to our application and we've added that as true. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to run this project and display it in a web browser. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in a height and a width here, just so it doesn't take up too much of the screen. So now I'm going to simply go debug, start without debugging, and I now have my barcode in my Silverlight application. So one other thing before we wrap up with this quick start guide is that you can also access all of these different barcodes by simply typing in Telerik and starting with RAD, B-A-R-C-O-D-E, and you have access to all of these different types of barcodes. So stay tuned for the next part where we're actually going to look at additional formats and really what type of industries that they're being used in. I want to thank you for watching Getting Started with the RAD Barcode. Be sure to check out tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements. Feel free to give it a try now by downloading the demo at telerik.com.